Starting in the late 1960s, an old research in the Bahamas has shown us how the presence or absence of one species can have major effects on an ecosystem, and that changes in the ecosystem can cause rapid evolution. Now, a new generation of researchers are building on that knowledge to ask more complex questions about species interactions and their evolutionary consequences. So the two anole species in our experiment are Anola sagrii, which is the trunk ground anole, and we call it the brown anole because it's brown, <laughs> um, and Anolis maragdinus, which is a trunk crown ecomorph, and we call that the green anole because it's green. We've got the curly-tailed lizard, which is known to be a predator of anoles, and that lives mainly on the ground. It's a very bulky lizard, about twice the length of an anole and much, much heavier. We've seen them eating everything from fruit to flower nectar to other lizards, you know, cockroaches, spiders, the whole works. We know that curly tails do eat the anoles in our study. Um, we don't know exactly how often. So the brown anoles aren't stupid. You get these curly tail lizards. They're fairly fast on the ground, but the curly tail lizards aren't good climbers. So when curly tail lizards are on an island, the brown anoles start moving up into the vegetation on the narrow stem bushes that the curly tail lizards can't climb up after them. So what happens if you have curly tailed predators and when brown anoles move up, they encounter green anoles? You know, who's gonna win that interaction? What can we conclude about how predation influences the ability of multiple anole species to coexist? In May of 2011, we came to the Bahamas and we identified 16 islands that had brown anole populations on them. We broke those islands up into four different groups and to one set of islands, we added the competitor of the brown anoles, which is the green anole. To another set of four islands, we added curly tail lizards, which is the terrestrial predator of brown anoles. And then to another set of four islands, we added both of those species. So both the predatory curly tail lizard and the competitor green anole. One thing that's always been difficult in field ecology studies is knowing exactly what it is your animals are eating. In the old days, to find out what lizards ate, scientists would go out and kill them and just cut open their stomachs. We don't do that anymore. Fortunately, there are new methods that allow us to see what lizards are eating without harming them. What we do is, is we capture the lizards and we hold them overnight in bags. They'll produce a fecal sample, which we then take back to the lab in Princeton. We perform a process called uh, DNA metabarcoding, which is basically just sequencing all the DNA in the prey that it's been eating. It's like if you made a smoothie and you put in a dozen different kinds of you know, fruits and nuts and you blend it all up, you know, it doesn't look like much. You, know, you can't really tell was there a banana in there or was there a blueberry. What we're doing is we're going in there and, and extracting the DNA of each of those fruits and nuts and then you know, putting it together as a list of things that went into that smoothie. Or if the smoothie is a, is a lizard turd, then things that went into that lizard's diet. When curly tail lizards are present, brown anoles move up and that, for one thing, totally changes their diet. When they're on islands by themselves, they have a diet of mostly ground-dwelling insects, and in particular, they love to eat these big cockroaches. And when we introduce curly-tailed lizards, the curly-tailed lizards take over that prey base. The other thing that happens when brown anoles move up is that they're moving into the habitat of the green anoles. So the green anoles are really canopy dwellers. And when the brown anoles move up, they have very similar diets, suggesting that they're also competing for food. We're also interested in the evolutionary dynamic, which can happen amazingly quickly. You know, it, it, so it's been five years since we 
initiated the experiment in 2011, and we're now testing to see whether there has been any evolutionary change as a result of our experimental treatments. So to do that, we're going out and we're catching as many lizards as we can. When people hear that we do field work in the Bahamas, they often act jealous and, and want to come along for the trips, but uh, I'm not sure they would last very long. <laughs> It's a surprisingly harsh environment. We come home with a lot of, of um, cuts, scrapes, and bruises. So when we get the anoles back to the lab, we start by anesthetizing the lizards and laying them out flat on a sheet. We take a nice x-ray. Then those lizards get weighed, passed on to a flatbed scanner where we take a high resolution image of their entire body, including those toe pads. We make sure they've recovered from the anesthesia, which they often do in a matter of five or ten minutes. And then the next day we take them back out to the field and we release them in the exact location where we caught them. So when the anoles shift up into the vegetation in the presence of the curly tail lizards, the branches that are higher up in the vegetation are much narrower. And so the prediction is that when those anoles are moving up into the vegetation, that they will, over time, adapt to those conditions and evolve shorter limbs. And is that what, is that what happens? We don't know yet. <laughs> These experiments show that ecological interactions are very strong, that species do compete for resources, that predators do affect the knolls in terms of their habitat use and population size. In some of these studies, we have seen evolutionary changes resulting from these interactions, species adapting to use different parts of the habitat. So when you have closely related species in a simple ecosystem, you can really see the importance of different factors in shaping how they coexist with each other and how evolution causes change through time. And so in that way, we think that anoles really are a good case study to understand life more generally, to understand the many species you see in the rainforest or the plains of Africa or wherever.